Yo, what's up YouTube? In this video, we're gonna be talking about arbitrage betting, which I know it sounds a little too good to be true, but is a strategy that anybody can do this, that you can use to make risk-free profits off the sports books. So there's a lot of people doing it. You look at this guy, the Arb Father. He started arbitrage betting in 2023, made over $45,000. So in this video, we're kind of gonna be breaking down the basics of arbitrage, how to get started, how it works, why it's possible. And I'm also gonna go through some of the FAQ frequently asked questions that come up about arbitrage betting. It's a super lucrative strategy, but there's definitely a lot of questions about arbitrage betting when I started. I had a lot of questions. There's a bit of a learning curve. So I hope to break everything down for you in this video. So the first question is what is arbitrage? What does that word mean? And it's not even a term that's specific to sports betting. All that arbitrage means is if you can simultaneously buy and sell and make a risk free profit. So a simple example is let's just imagine there's a stock and you can buy it for $10 on E-Trade and then your friend will buy it for $11. So you can buy it for 10, sell it to your friend for 11. You make a risk-free profit of $1 that's arbitrage. Now the reason arbitrage is possible in sports betting is every sports book sets different odds. Every book sets their own odds, their own lines. So a simple example you can see right here is a big discrepancy in Kyrie Irving points. Kyrie Irving over 21 and a half points is minus 108 odds on Caesar Sportsbook. DraftKings is way different. They have this line at minus 135, and then you can see Pinnacle, another sports book, they have this line all the way up at minus 156. So all these books have different prices or different odds, and that's why arbitrage betting is possible. Out of the millions of odds across sports books, each sports book typically has around 50,000 odds at any given time. Out of the millions of odds, usually there's a few spots where sports books are way out of sync with one another, and you can bet the over on one book, the under on another book to guarantee a profit. So you're essentially just day trading the sports books. In this example on Kyrie Irving, you'd wanna bet his over at minus 108 on Caesars and bet his under at plus 119 on Pinnacle. So I figured we could start out just going through a simple example of an arbitrage bet. So you can see this guy, he locked in an arbitrage bet where he's making a profit of $50 or $66. It doesn't matter what happens if Josh Giddy goes over one and a half threes or Josh Giddy goes under one and a half threes, he's gonna make money no matter what, 50 bucks or 66. So let's kind of go through the math. You can see on ESPN, so the sports books he's using are ESPN and FanDuel. So with arbitrage betting, you're hedging for a profit. So you're always placing two bets on two different sports books, capitalizing on inefficiencies in the market. So you can see on ESPN, he bet Josh Giddy under one and a half threes at minus 150 odds for 475 bucks. Now on FanDuel, he bet Josh Giddy over one and a half threes. That's the same as two plus threes, two plus threes over one and a half, they're the same thing. And he played this for 250 at plus 210 odds on FanDuel. So he's betting a total of $725, right? He has 475 on Giddy's under on ESPN, and then he has 250 on Giddy's over one and a half threes or two plus made threes on FanDuel at plus 210 odds. So let's break down the math. So let's say Giddy has a good game. He has two or more made threes. So if he has two or more made threes, the bet on ESPN is gonna lose, right? Under one and a half made threes, we're gonna lose 475 bucks. But on FanDuel, we bet 250 at plus 210 odds. So we're gonna be up 525 in profit. So the net profit, lose 475 on ESPN, win 525 on FanDuel, the net profit is gonna be 50 bucks. Now, on the other hand, let's say he goes under, right? He has zero or one made three. In that case, the bet on ESPN is gonna win 316.67 in profit, $475 bet at minus 150 odds, but we're gonna lose 250 on FanDuel for a net profit of 66.67. So you can see, it doesn't matter. If Giddy goes over or if he goes under, we make a risk-free profit no matter what of 50 bucks or 66.67. So another way you can think about arbitrage is by looking at your total stake versus your payout. So for example, on FanDuel, he bet 250 and then on ESPN, he bet 475. So that's a combined amount of $725. And you're gonna see if you look at FanDuel, 
right? You're betting 250 to win 775. So the total payout, if Giddy has two plus made threes, is 775 bucks. So you're betting 725. And if Giddy goes over, you're getting back 775. So the net profit is going to be $50. You're turning a stake of 725 total into 775. On the other hand, if Giddy goes under and you look at ESPN, the payout is 791.67. So you bet 725 total, you turned it into 791.67. Your net profit's going to be 66.67, just like we went through previously, kind of breaking down the math. So we just went through an example of a super good arbitrage bet, but now we can get into some of the FAQs. And one question that comes up all the time is, well, how many arbitrage plays are there on a daily basis? Are we talking about five, 10, 100? And it really depends, right? It depends how many sports books you're using. I've used over 50 sports books. I recommend for every new sports better, sign up for all the books that are legal in your location. The more books you're using, the more arbitrage plays there's gonna be. Right? Sometimes FanDuel is screwing up a lot of their lines and there's a ton of arbitrage bets on FanDuel. Other days it's Caesars or Fliff. It really depends. So I always recommend most of these books have pretty lucrative sign-up bonuses and promos when you first register anyways. Sign up for the books that are legal in your state and you'll kind of start to get a sense of which books have the most arbitrage opportunities on a daily basis. The second thing is it depends how much time you put in. Right? Nobody knows when these market inefficiencies, when these arbitrage plays are going to occur. So the people who are making serious profits arbitrage betting, they're putting in time. Right, They're not just checking for arbitrage plays one minute a day. A lot of these people are putting in a couple hours who are making thousands of dollars a day arbitrage betting. The final thing to mention is it depends on the sports calendar. Right, If only MLB is going on in June and it's the heart of summer and there's not a lot of sports going on, there's not gonna be a lot of arbitrage plays. Whereas in October and November, when you have football, basketball, all the major sports going on, there's usually a fair amount of opportunity. So long story short, there's plenty of arbitrage bets. Just make sure you're signed up for as many sports books as possible, and then just check throughout the day. Nobody knows when these market inefficiencies are gonna occur. So the more you're looking, the more arbitrage plays you're gonna find. So really briefly, I'll show you how I arbitrage bet. Odds Jam has a betting tool for arbitrage. And the first step is just select the state you're located in. Every state has different sports books. So depending on where you're located, you can obviously filter in, filter out certain sports books, but you'll see different arbitrage plays. So the first play we can see right here is between Bovada and FanDuel. Again, the more books you're using, the more arbitrage plays you're gonna have. And it's a really simple to do. You can see there's a huge discrepancy in Jabari Smith total points. So all you wanna do, right? This is a 4.55% risk-free return we're earning today, right? That's what's crazy about arbitrage is if you could earn even just 2% a day on your arbitrage plays since you're betting on games that day, there's 30 days in a month. So if you're earning 2% risk-free on your money a day, that's 60% a month because there's 30 days in a month. But anyways, all you wanna do is go right here, click into the arbitrage calculator. Let's say you wanna bet 250 on Bovada. This is gonna tell you to hedge. So you just put in your stake, what you wanna bet on one sports book. It'll tell you, hey, bet 275 on FanDuel as your hedge bet, and you'll make a risk-free profit of 25 bucks. And obviously you can tailor this. I started out when I was first arbitrage betting, betting about a hundred bucks on each side. So if you put $100 on Bovada, it'll tell you bet 110 on FanDuel and you make $10 in risk-free profit, right? Which is crazy. So then after you place this arbitrage bet, what you can do is go to the next arbitrage play and lock it in. I used to get home from work and just lock in as many arbitrage plays as I could on a daily basis, get some easy free money. And all that odds jam is doing is these sports books have so many lines available. I mean, you can see for just one NBA game on FanDuel, there's so much possible stuff you can bet. So Odds Jam is just reading in all this data, all the odds on sports books. They're all setting their own odds and lines and pointing out the rare few opportunities where arbitrage exists and two sports books are super out of sync, so much so that you can bet on equal and opposite outcomes and guarantee a profit. So we can get into some more arbitrage FAQ. And one question that comes up all the time is when do the best arbitrage bets occur? And oftentimes it's after injury news or lineup changes. 
So you can imagine if LeBron James gets injured in practice the day before a game and he's not going to be able to play in the upcoming Lakers game, that's going to massively move around the lines. Not only the money line, the total, and the point spread, but also it's going to move around other player props, right? If LeBron's out, Anthony Davis will probably take more of the scoring load and his line and odds will have to change. And again, all these books are setting and managing their own odds. So whenever there's new news in the market, like an injury, like a lineup change, the market gets out of sync and there's usually some pretty good arbitrage plays. So now we can get into some more arbitrage, frequently asked questions. And one question that comes up all the time is what if the books end up changing their odds, right? As we try to place our arbitrage bet. Obviously, arbitrage is a market inefficiency. You're taking advantage of huge discrepancies in the odds between books. And sometimes the book may notice and try to adjust their odds before you can place your arbitrage bet. So obviously, if you haven't placed either bet yet, just move on to the next arbitrage play and try to move a little bit quicker. Odds Jam actually recently introduced a feature called One Click Bet. It only works for certain sports books like FanDuel, but it will automatically link you to the bet on the sports book to try to make arbitrage betting faster so you're able to get more plays down. So my second tip is start small, right? When you're arbitrage betting, there's a bit of a learning curve, getting a sense of how quickly will books move their odds. So when you start arbitrage betting, you may see your first play and want to slam it for $1,000 to make $100 in profit, like on this play on Jabari Smith we showed a little earlier. But what I recommend is start out arbitrage betting $10, even $1, just to get a sense of the books, how quickly they're moving their lines. Because obviously the worst thing that can happen is if you place one side of your arbitrage bet, you lock in one play, and then the second book changes their odds before you can lock in the second play. So what I typically recommend doing is get a sense of which books move odds quickest. You'll also get a sense of which books allow full cash out, right? So typically what I do when I'm arbitrage betting is I place my first bet on a book that has full cash out. And what I mean by that is let's say I'm trying to place an arbitrage bet. I put $100 down and then the second play moves. There are some books that will let you cash out your bet. So if the second bet moves, we can just cash out our initial wager for $100 and just get that money back. So long story short, a lot of your problems are gonna be solved by just start out small. I don't know all the sports books, you know, where you're located, which books you're gonna be arbitrage betting on, but start out with lower bet sizes as you get a sense of the sports books, which books move odds quickest, which books have full cash out if the line ends up moving, and that'll help you gain confidence, and then you can ramp up your bet size and start to make bigger profits. So another question that comes up a lot is limits. What if you place one side of your arbitrage bet you're trying to bet $500 on the second play and the sports book says, hey, you can only bet 300, right? Sports betting markets, they're not super liquid or active enough where you can bet $10,000 on whatever you want. Most of these books have lower max betting sizes. So again, I recommend starting small. Start out betting 10, dollars on each arbitrage play, then ramp up to 25, 50, 100 as you're growing your bankroll, and you'll get a sense of what the max bet size is on each sports book. Just start out betting a little smaller. So another question that comes up somewhat frequently is will arbitrage betting get your accounts limited? So there are some sports books that are pretty aggressive against sharper, profitable customers, and they'll cut down your max bet size. So for example, this sports book prize picks Earlier in the year, I was able to bet $500 on whatever I wanted, but once I started making money on prize picks, they cut down my max bet size to $25, which absolutely sucks, but that's just kind of part of the game. There are certain sports books like BetMGM, BetRivers, and PointsBet, which are known to have more aggressive limits on sharper, profitable customers. And that's why you wanna use as many books as possible. Some books just have more aggressive limits. But this has nothing to do with arbitrage betting. This has everything to do with being profitable and making money. So if you wanna have unlimited limits and be able to bet $10,000 on every single sports book, then here's my recommendation for you. Lose a lot of money. Then these sports books will take all of your action. It doesn't have anything to do with arbitrage betting. These sports books aren't the CIA comparing bets of particular users. That's not how it works. However, there are certain things you can do to preserve the longevity of your accounts. 
So the first thing is when you're arbitrage betting, round your bet sizes. So you'll sometimes notice on the arbitrage calculator, if you put in a stake of let's say $1,000, it may tell you to hedge and bet like 337 bucks and 42 cents on the second sports book. What I always recommend doing is just round your bet sizes to the nearest five. So instead of betting like 337.34, bet 335 or 340. It's not really gonna affect your profit long-term, but rounding your bet sizes will help you out. The second thing is don't slam very niche markets for abnormal amounts of money. So arbitrage bets on NBA money lines, main markets like money line spreads and totals, your arbitrage plays can be a bit bigger, but for the more niche markets like Russian ping pong or KHL or NBA player points plus rebounds, I recommend keeping your arbitrage bet sizes just a little bit lower in the hundreds. Don't go into the thousands and that'll help you preserve limits on your accounts a bit longer. But again, if you're making money in any way, it doesn't matter if you're middle betting, if you're arbitrage betting, positive EV betting, if you're crushing these books and taking a lot of money from them, they're eventually gonna cut down your bet sizes at least by a bit. That's just kind of how it goes. That's part of the game. So the next question that comes up a lot is, is live arbitrage profitable? Betting on games with arbitrage as they're currently going on? And the answer is yes. Books have a really hard time managing their lines while games are going on. So there's oftentimes some really good arbitrage plays. What's hard about live betting though, is things move really fast. Right, If you're trying to bet and get an arbitrage bet down while an NBA game is going on and these players are running up and down the court, it's going to be hard. Lines move quickly. So what I recommend doing when you're live arbitrage betting is looking for plays at quarter breaks, timeouts, halftime, when the game is currently paused, because usually that will give you a bit more time to get your bets down before the odds end up changing. So I hope you found this video on arbitrage betting helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. We'll be happy to answer. Arbitrage is a great strategy. It's the strategy I used when I started out sports betting. It's a way that, you know, literally once you understand it, you can grow your bankroll risk-free, which is incredible. I mean, where else can you sit at home and just place some bets and make risk-free money? It's absolutely insane. So if you have any questions, feel free. To reach out to me, I'll also include my email in the description. Let's make some money, guys.